Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure the book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today is our day number 11. And we are on page number 85. On page 85 you will see that there are only four problems. 71, 72, 73 and 74. Problem number 74 is on the blackboard. This is number 74. Reason, the reason we want to start out with 74 is because this problem required a lot of writing and I didn't want to do that in the middle of the video. So we'll start with number 74 and then we'll pick up 71, 2 and 3. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to read the problem to you first, then I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to pause the video, do it yourself, you know the routine, and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Okay, here we go. So here's the deal. We have borrowed 12 books from the library. We have borrowed 12 books from the library. We have a period of 28 days, and we want to read these books. The question is, how many, how many out of those 12 books are we, are we going to be able to read, given these conditions? We have to read exactly 50 pages, and no more read exactly 50 pages. The second condition is that we cannot start a new book, we cannot start a new book on the same day when we finish the previous book. So given these two conditions and the third condition being that we have, we have only 28 days at our, at our hand, how many books can we read? Pause the video and do it yourself. Let's see what we can do. Let me give you a simple example first. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say we have two books. Let's say we have two books. Book one has 51 pages and the book two has 30 pages. How many days is it going to take us to read these two books given the conditions? We will not be able to finish these two books in two days. We will take, we'll have to take three days because on the, on, on the first day we'll read 50 pages. On the second day we'll read the last page remaining of the first book because we can only read 50 pages in a day and we cannot start a new book on the same day that we finished the previous book. So on the second day we'll read one page and then on the third day so it will take us three days. This scenario will take us three days to finish the thing. The same thing is going on here. So for example the very first book is 253 pages. Because it's 253 and not 250, 250 would have taken us exactly five days. But on the six days on the sixth day, we'll have to read the remaining three pages. So the first book is going to take us six, six days. Same thing with second book. We'll finish 100 pages in the two days, and on the third day, we'll have to do the remaining 10 pages. Same thing here. We'll have to do the remaining 17 pages on the third day. 50, 50, and 17. So that's so far. So far, that's 12. Remember, we have 28 days altogether. Altogether, we have 28 days. So we'll keep on going, see what happens. 170, again, 170, 150 will require three days, and on the fourth day, we'll have to read the remaining, two page, uh, remaining 20 pages, so that's four days. The same thing is going on here, except on this, for this one, on the fourth day, we'll read only five pages. This will take exactly one, one day, so that's nine so far. So that's 21. We have seven more to go. 205 pages, 200 pages would have taken us exactly four days, but this is going to take us five days. And then this book here, 70 pages, will take us two days, because we're going to read 50 pages on the first day and the remaining 20 pages on the, th on the second day. There we go. We got up to eight. We can only read eight out of these 12 books. The remaining four books will also simply return to the library without having read them. Without having read them. Eight books is what we can read. Number 71. Number 71 is asking us which one which can be written
as an integer. We are given three quantities and our job is to identify which one, which one of these three or maybe all three can be written as an integer. Here is the first one. root 82 plus root 82 whole squared. Second one, 82 times root 82. And finally, third one, root 82 times root 82 over 82. Pause the video and do it yourself. This is actually quite a straightforward question. Do it yourself and then we'll compare the work. Let's see what we can do. <coughs> the very first one there, root 82 plus root 82 whole squared can be written as 2 times root 82 whole squared. Of course, if you have a plus a whole squared is same as 2a whole squared. When we, op when, we, when we open this square thing, this 2 is going to become 4 and this 82, square root of 82 is just 82, that's, that's your answer. What that quantity is, what this quantity is, we are not interested in that. All we care about is that when we multiply these two numbers, of course it's an integer. Number one works, of course it's an integer. What about number two? Number two, we have a problem here, because root of 82, root of 82 is not an integer because 82 is not a perfect square. So when you multiply this guy by 82, this is not going to give us an integer. This is quite straightforward. Root of 82 times root of 82 is just 82. If all we have is 82 over 82, which of course is 1. That works. So the answer is 1 and 3. Number 72. In number 72 we are told that A can do a job, can do half of the job in three hours. We are told that B can do the same job, but two thirds of the same job in six hours. The question simply is, how long will it take, how long will they take together to do the job, to do the same job obviously. And of course in the problem itself, in the book itself, of course they are more methodical, they are more more careful in their wording, they are of course doing the same exact bloody job, they are working simultaneously at their respective paces, all of this is understood. Pause the video and do it together. One guy takes three hours to do half the job, the other guy takes six hours to do two thirds of the job, how long together? Let's see what we can do, shall we? So here's our A. A we know can do half in three hours. B we know can do two third in six hours. Let's see what we can do with them, shall we? If A can do half the job in three hours, that implies that A must be able to do the whole job in six hours. That's quite straightforward. Let's move on to this guy. If this guy can do two thirds of the job in six hours, that implies that he should be able to do one third of the job in three hours. We're not interested in how long it takes him to do one third of the job. We want to know how long it takes him to do the whole bloody job. So if he can do one third in three hours, he should be able to do the entire job in nine hours. If you want to multiply both sides by three. So here we have he takes nine hours to the job, here it takes six hours to the job. We got a problem. We got a problem here because the times are not the same. We need to make the time same. 
let's convert, try to convert this into a 9 because we have a 9 here. So we know he can do one job in 6 hours, he can do half a job in 3 hours. So if we were to give him another 3 hours, he should be able to do another half a job. Which means he can do one and a half jobs in 9 hours. There we go. Now we can make use of this information. Which means working together, working together, they should be able to do one and a half job this guy, one job this guy, they should be able to do two and a half jobs in nine hours. Two and a half jobs in nine hours. Which means, which implies that they should be able to do one job in nine over two and a half. Nine over two and a half is same as nine over five halves. Which is same as, let's continue, let's continue this guy here, which, which of course is same as 9 times 2 over 5. Let's continue this guy here, 9 times 2 over 5. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2. And you'll see in a second why I did that. So now we have 9 times 2 times 2, that's 36. That's 36. And on the bottom we have 5 times 2, which is 10 looks to me that they should be able to do the job together in 3.6 hours in 3.6 hours and that's exactly how answer choices are laid out answer choices are stated in decimals and 3.6 is one of the answer choices obviously answer is B that's 73 we are told that the square root of x squared minus 2 is less than 0. Specify all possible values of x. So what they want us to specify all possible values of x given this condition, the condition being that x squared minus 2 has to be less than 0. This has to be a negative quantity. And what they mean by specify all possible values is that we have to present our answer in an interval form or intervals which which encapsulate which captures all the possible values all the possible solutions pause the video do it yourself what I want you to do actually is to show this thing in a number line here's your zero here and somehow show all the possible values in number line okay I'll give you a second to, to be able to pause the video and and then we'll start again so this part is quite straightforward if we add two to both sides what we find is that x squared has to be less than 2 x squared has to be less than 2. This is where in the last video or the video before it I told you that you must know you must know your squares. You must know your squares 1 through 20 they come in quite handy. I'm going to leave you a link in this video also of a video where you can, where you can learn all the squares 1 through 20. If we know all of our squares then we know that 14 squared, 14 squared is 196. If 14 squared is 196, that implies that 1.4 squared is 1.96, which is approximately 2. So which means any value that is up to 1.4, we should be fine. 1.4 squared, 1.24 squared is going to be less than 2. It's going to be one. It's going to be 1.96. So we can actually go slightly more than that. But this part is fine. But that's not the whole story. Because this is squared, the negatives will also work up to 1.4. Up to negative 1.4 it should also work. In other words, if we were to take negative 1.2, then square it, 12 squared is 144. We'll end up with positive 1.44. And of course, positive 1.44 is less than 1.4. 12 squared is 144. Oh, this is not 1.4. This is 1.4, negative 1.4 squared. This is 1.96. I'm showing in squares here. 
So 1.44 of course is less than 1.96 or, or to be more precise 1.44 of course is less than 2. So that's your solution there. Let's erase all of the things so we can write, write what we need to write here. So this is our negative 2 and this is our positive 2. I'm cho I showed here in squares to make it easier for you to see that we're talking about 2 here. But that's what that is. So x has to fall between these two. Not 0, but x. That's our solution set. x has to fall between negative square root of 2 and a positive square root of 2. That was number 73. This page only had 4 problems on it. 71, 2, 3 and 4. We already did 74. So that was the end of the show. That's the end of the page. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up from where we left off. Alright? Bye now.